hello and assalamu alaikum everyone i am afzal Batsha and today in this video i am going to discuss how to write the methodology chapter of your thesis and your uh, dissertations in the methodology chapter actually we discuss our aims and objectives that what type of methodology what type of experimentation prototyping surveys questionnaires etc are used to get our objectives and aims if you remember in the introduction chapter we discussed that we define the uh, uh, our main challenges our main issues that what are the main issues which we got from the literature and after that we define that what are our main objectives and aims for example in my case in my this uh, research this dissertations my research issue was that with the miss massive workload with the dynamic customer it is quite challenging to uh, keep that keep them satisfied with limited resources so with with that issue my my objective was my aim was to satisfy the customer with limited resources and to maximize the revenue with limited resources this was my objective now in the methodology chapter i have to address my objectives i have to address my aims which i define in my first chapter so when you will start the writing of your methodology chapter and you write the methodology chapter after the literature review you will first define that either your research is qualitative or quantitative Quantitative research means that you are doing some time of experimentation. This research which, which will handle the numbers. This research will handle the um, uh, mathematics. Then if, if uh, your research is handling this thing, then, then your research will be quantitative. But if you are write, writing text and you are dealing with the theories, then your research will be qualitative. So for example, if your research is a quantitative, after that you will define that what you are doing to do. Are you doing such type of experimentations? Are you doing to uh, do some type of uh, uh, prototype? Are you going to create some type of labs? Are you going to uh, use some uh, uh, simulators? Because usually simulators are used to do the experimentation because the labs are very hard and labs are very costly to create. So after defining that your research is quantitative and qualitative, you define your problem once again that what is your actual problem which you are going to handle. And after that, you are going to define that what methodology you are going to adopt. In my case, I am going to uh, work in the cloud computing. So I wrote that it is very difficult and it is very costly to create a cloud computing labs. And it is also very hard for a student to create a cloud labs because he is not able to aff afford all these things. So I am going to use the cloud sim. Cloud sim is actually a cloud uh, based simulator which is used to simulate every type of cloud experimentations and cloud activities. So I am not going to afford labs. So I am going to use the cloud simulator. If I am using the cloud simulator, so I define in detail the working of the cloud simu simulator, that how cloud simulator works. So for example, if you are going to do create a labs, then you will write in detail that what type of labs you are going to create. And if you are going to create some type of prototyping, then you have to discuss in detail that what type of prototype prototyping you are going to do. And if you are going to discuss the uh, interviews, you are going to discuss sub, some type of any other things, questionnaires, then you have to discuss all these things in detail. And if you are going to use any simulator, then you have to discuss this simulator in detail. After discussing these, uh, the simulation in detail, that how this will work, what will be your contribution, what type of classes you, will, you are going to aid, and, and uh, what type of libraries you are going to aid, how this will work, how lab will be created, you define the data set. Because in the experimentation, data set is very important, which is usually processed to get some data. And the data set which you are going, which you are going to process, 
must be used by any other person the paper and means that you have any reference for the workload or you have to uh, have any valid reason that why you are going to use this workload and why you are going to use this sample without any reference without any strong reference you are not going to use this you will not be able to use this because your supervisor the research community will need the citation the research community will need the, the reference that why do you are doing these things after defining all these things you create the scenarios for example i have created some scenarios I have created some parameters which are, I am going to measure because in your field there will be hundreds and thousands of parameters on which main parameters you are going to work. You have to define these parameters too on which you are going to work. Okay, And after that I created some scenario and how I am going to handle these scenarios and how I am going to create my own coding, how I am going to create uh, uh, my own simulations for these scenarios so for example in my case when I was going to handle one of my questions that that resources non scalability is the main issues to maximize the provider revenue so in the scenario I wrote in detail that uh, how I handle this issue in the cloud simulator the simulator which I am going to use for the simulation so for that, I wrote in detail that I create a global server, I create a global broker, I also create a local broker and also with that I created a local server and global server. What I am going to do that I am migrating resources from local resources to the global resources. Then the local resources uh, get overutilized, I will take these resources uh, towards the global broker and global broker will utilize any other external resources to uh, uh, to execute uh, execute this workload this means that resources utilizations and local resources will be minimized and this will be transferred to the global resources and the local resources will, will get easy and uh, there will be no SLA violation and there will be no SLA rejections Furthermore, for example, I am going to satisfy the customers. So the customer satisfactions, I created, I coded some type of prices policies. And I have divided my customer into different categories. For example, the customers which are going to hire my resources for permanent basis, for example, for one year, for two years. The customer which are who are coming to use my resources uh, uh, only for a, only for an instant, okay, on demand base you can say, and the customer who are coming to hire my resources which are underutilized. So I use different type of pricing for these. Some prices are higher because if you are getting to uh, get a high performance definitely the the prices will be high and if, if you are demanding a lower performance definitely the prices will be low so i handle my second issues the second scenario by defining different type of uh, experiment uh, different uh, different type of scenarios and creating different type of scenarios and creating different type of simulation, creating different type of experimentation, creating different type of labs for every scenarios and writing detail, writing in detail that how you are going to handle, uh, how you are going to handle this scenario. So this was about that how you are going to write the research methodology chapter. Well, uh, uh, little that. Uh, after writing all these things, you summarize every chapter. This is very important that you have to summarize all these uh, things at the end of every chapter. So I defined once again that how you are going to write this chapter, the methodology chapter, that at the first, you are going to define that either, uh, either your research is a quantitative or qualitative. After defining that your research is quantitative, for example, this is experimental research, you define your problem once again. This is the same problem which you define in the introductions. And after that you define in detail your methodology 
the experiment, the labs, the, the cloud simulation, whatever you are going to use, we define in detail. And after defining these things, you define the parameters, you define the data sets, you define the data sample which you are going to take and you give any strong reference that why you are going to uh, take this, this data set. And after that, you create scenarios to handle your issues, your challenges or your objectives which, which you define in the objective um, in the introduction chapter. And after that, you summarize your chapter. Thank you so much for watching.